Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of DC Best Ever. Today, I'm gonna to talk about some questions that I've come across on Quora. Now recently, I joined Quora, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it's Q-U-O-R-A. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it's basically an online forum where people can ask whatever question they want to ask, and other users can answer those questions and include credentials that makes them qualified to to answer those questions. So I'd say it's a little bit of a step above just doing a Google search. Now, because I'm into a lot of food related things, most of the questions that I get directed towards me are food related. Sometimes I'll get some other off topic things that I'm not qualified to answer. So I'll usually pass on those questions and uh, <laughs> Some, some of the questions that I get are absolutely ridiculous. So for this first video in a series of videos that I'm gonna do based on questions that I come across on this website is I'm just gonna give you a rundown of some of the questions that have come up in my, my queue to answer. And they're not all ridiculous. I mean, some of them are le legit questions and I will take the time and answer those. Others, I won't give them the time of day. For instance, one of the most ridiculous questions that I just saw like two days ago was, can you get AIDS from drinking milk? Now, most of the time I would just pass by a question like this, but I felt compelled to respond with something. So <laughs> I said, uh, I don't know if this is a serious question or not, but that's like asking if you can get pregnant from masturbating. I really didn't know what else to say, but I felt like I had to say something to make that person question the validity of their their own question. <laughs> it's so stupid. So I've got Quora pulled up and I'm in my answer queue right now. And I'm just gonna read through some of these. And like I said, they're not all ridiculous. Some of them are like good questions, like things that I would wonder myself if I didn't ha already have that knowledge. Uh, the first question on my list is, what happens if I eat bourbon biscuits opened one month before the month of expiry? Okay, first of all, I don't know what the hell a bourbon biscuit is, but it sounds delicious and I wanna know where I can get one. The second thing is, if you opened them a month before they expire, so what's the question? Like, what's the problem? So I do feel like sometimes people will ask questions and then they don't proofread the question before they submit it. So I'm wondering if this person meant to ask, what happens if I eat bourbon biscuits open one month after the month of expiry? Based on the way that they worded the question, I'm assuming they're somewhere in Europe, maybe the UK, possibly. I commend you for eating bourbon biscuits, because that just sounds awesome. But uh, I really don't know how to answer that question. Uh, see, the next one. Why do people mindlessly eat when they aren't even hungry? See, that's what I would qualify as a legitimate question. It's something that maybe somebody doesn't understand that concept of, of uh, habits, like bad habits. Bad habits come in many different forms. When people get nervous, they'll shake their legs uh, or some people are just habitual cigarette smokers. You know, that's just, it's a habit to them. Whereas other people, they will eat as just something to do. It just gives them something to do with their hands, with their mouth, because they can't, for some reason, they're not wired to be able to just sit still and not do anything and just relax. Unfortunately, people are like that and it can have, you know, detrimental effects on their health but that's the best answer that I can come up with for that. Is hot food better than cold? Like, what does that even mean? Salads are meant to be eaten cold. Chicken enchiladas are meant to be eaten hot. You know, you can't really compare the two. You know, people sometimes on this website need to be more specific. Um, another question that I answered the other day, let me see if I can get the wording correct. I passed a cop doing 55 and as he passed, he flashed his lights at me. Was he trying to signal me to slow down? So uh, there, I think there was a little bit more wording to it, but what's messed up about it is, is like 
did you pass him or did he pass you or did you pass him first and then he passed by you afterwards and then flashed his lights i don't i don't understand the question you'll get a lot of those like i see at least one of those every single day that i i come onto this website um let's see okay here's this is an actual good question do you prefer an electric or gas stove unfortunately i live in florida and there really aren't gas stoves available unless you live in a house that has a a large pro propane tank that's buried in the yard that feeds into your home i would personally prefer a gas stove because i feel like your food cooks more quickly and more evenly than it does with an electric burner which ingredients would you like to see in your perfect omelet that's a good question and that's one that i would have to put a lot of thought into uh, there's so many things that I could throw into an omelet. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know how much I love to make omelets. I had one for lunch today because I usually skip breakfast, but I still like to have breakfast food as my first meal of the day. You know, you gotta have some kind of a protein in there. So bacon would be ideal, ham, turkey, chicken, uh, any of those things would be great. Uh, and then you gotta have your veggies, onions, bell pepper, mushrooms, um, even though mushroom isn't a vegetable, spinach, uh, tomato. There's so many, you throw a bunch of ingredients in front of me and I could tell you what would go good in an omelet. And you know, sometimes throwing too many ingredients into something isn't good, but you know, sometimes you'll go to one of those buffets where they have a made to order omelet station and I will just go to town and I'll just add like everything and it usually comes out delicious. So <laughs> uh, when it comes to omelets, uh, you can pretty much throw anything into an omelet and I'm gonna like it. So that's my answer. Uh, and then there's some questions like this one that I don't know the answer to. Why can't you refreeze food that's already thawed? I really don't know. I would assume that the constant just thawing and and freezing of food just back and forth, back and forth. It probably does something on a chemical or a anatomical uh, or a, uh, an atomic level that either breaks down the, the proteins inside of it. It probably makes it more vulnerable to like bacteria or uh, you know just going bad earlier. That's the only thing I can think of, but I really don't have a legitimate answer. Here's another one I don't know the answer to. What company makes Walmart's market side chunky blue cheese salad dressing? I don't know. I've never seen that before. Is the role of milk in icing slash frosting just for texture and consistency? or could I make a thicker frosting by decreasing milk? Well, to answer the second part of the question, obviously by adding less liquid, it would make uh, whatever texture thicker. You know, same thing with like, if you make stovetop like mac and cheese, by putting less milk, it'll give you more of a creamy texture, especially if you add extra butter and decrease the liquid that you're putting into it, which I do. Actually, I don't decrease the liquid, but I do put extra butter and that is delicious. C, can my husband drink or take the fertility concoction of banana, egg, milk, and soda? That, I, I was gonna say that sounds disgusting, but I don't know. That sounds interesting. Banana, egg, milk, and soda. That's gotta be a European thing because I've never heard of that before. But I'm really intrigued. It makes me want to Google this and see what happens. That might be a whole nother video right there. <laughs> Let's see. Do MREs eventually go rancid even in a sealed package? Well, I think MREs are designed to last a very long time you know for people who are unable to get to a civilized area or, uh, or civilization i should say uh to get fresh food but i think you know everything has a shelf life even if you have an item that has a date stamped on it chances are it's still going to be good a little while past that date that doesn't apply to everything you still have to pass visual or other sensory tests to make sure this item is still safe for consumption. Uh, but my answer would be yes, uh, eventually it would go bad. Uh, let me see, I'm just gonna run through a couple more of these uh, because I wanna keep this video a little bit short. Do you like your pizza toppings over or under the cheese? That's, that's a great question. And honestly, it depends. I think one of the benefits of having your toppings under the cheese is when you're picking up a slice of pizza, and the cheese is melted over the top of it, it will help prevent those toppings from falling off. 
onto the plate. Um, but some people like the texture or the look, you know, sometimes it, the visual appeal of seeing all these toppings on a food uh, or a pizza in this case makes for a more enjoyable experience. You know, sometimes it's about mouthfeel for people. Uh, I could really go either way when it comes to that. Um, usually the toppings that I see are melted into the cheese. So, you know, it, it really doesn't matter to me, but I think a majority of people like to see what they're eating and they don't like like it to be hidden. Uh, let me see. And there's just like, there's uh, three more. I'll just do these last three and then we'll, uh, we'll call it a day. How long does it take before cheddar cheeses become hazardous to eat? The thing about cheese is it will always give you visual clues when it's starting to go bad. Cheese will go moldy and it is very easy to tell if cheese has mold on it. Now, it'll usually affect the edges of the cheese first and for the most part, you can just cut off the moldy area and as long as you don't see any, any other signs of mold on the rest of the cheese, it's usually still safe to eat. But as far as a whole time frame, it really depends on how you stored your cheese. And I think the more air that is coming into contact with the cheese, it will start to go bad a lot more quickly. So if you're storing your cheese in the refrigerator, you wanna make sure that you have it in some kind of an airtight container, uh, like a good Ziploc bag or you know Tupperware or both. You know, just depends on uh, what you have available. What is the difference in flavor and texture between a leg of chicken that is air fried and one that is deep fried? I've I've never had air fried chicken, so I, I'm not qualified to answer that question, but that's a really good question. I'd love to find that out. And uh, the last one is another one I've, I've never, but, well, let me, let me ask the question here. How long do you have to bake a 12 plus pound frozen turkey? I've never made turkey myself before. I've never baked turkey, I should say. So uh, I really don't know. I usually get invited to places for Thanksgiving and that's usually the only time that people are making turkey, at least where I'm from. <laughs> but I've never attempted to make a turkey myself. I don't think I have the patience for it. And I'm not great when it comes to multitasking, uh, you know, making a turkey and then, then like making all these other side dishes. So I, I don't know, I'd have to do some research on that one. But now you have an idea of the kind of questions that I get on Quora. So, I think I'm gonna use this as a way to come up with other video concepts because some of these questions make for great video content. So stick around for that. If you're liking my videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and uh, hit that little bell, that notification icon, and you'll get a notification every time I post a new video. Uh, but that's it for now. In the meantime, you guys take care. If you're enjoying my videos, don't forget to subscribe right here. Also, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook so you can share it with your friends. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.